All right, guys, I got thousands of tweets, a couple, a couple tweets recently telling me to react to this video from Hunter Williams. It's called the real reason Cody Ko became a millionaire. <laughs> try billionaire, buddy. <laughs> nice try. Millionaire, come on. This is the minor leagues. Oh yeah, a million dollars. I have hundreds of millions, dude. You have no idea. I'm kidding, I don't. But uh, I could, maybe, you know, if I invested properly using the sponsor of today's video, Public. Come on, that was pretty good. You gotta give me credit for that. Today's sponsor is public.com, an investing app where uh, you can buy and sell stocks, follow investors, and share ideas. So I joined Public and you can you can search my portfolio. It's Public. Uh, just search at Cody Co in the app. It's the best place to invest, especially if you're just getting started. You can follow people like me, Philip DeFranco, Shaq, Tony Hawk, and thousands more and see you know what they're investing in as well. The app is free and you can start with as little as $1 because you can buy just slices or portions of a stock instead of full shares. And public does not sell your data or information to third parties or market makers like other investment apps. If you sign up today by going to public.com slash Cody Co, then you'll get a free slice of stock. Just hit the link in the description and follow me too. You'll get a free slice of stock. It's a, it's a great deal. All right, now that we're all millionaires, probably from public, let's take a look at this video. Let's see what his conclusions are. Cody Co is without a doubt one of the best entrepreneurs on YouTube. Come on, dude. <laughs> Come on. Come on, man. You got me blushing already. You really you got me blushing already. Also, I feel like such a douche for reacting to this. Hold on, I gotta I gotta take this. Now I'm even more of a douche. Alright, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry, douchiest thing I could have ever done while watching a video praising myself is take a phone call in the middle of it. I mean, that's just how Hollywood is that shit. Alright. Let's go. Most content creators' careers are on one platform, maybe two tops, but Cody has somehow been able to extend his reach across numerous platforms and mediums. From Vine to YouTube and TikTok, to a scripted drama, to podcasting, and even music. Can I just say, this looks incredible, dude. This looks incredible. How do you get your videos to look like this? How? I've been trying for years. I don't know, just tell me, Hunter. Tell me what camera to buy. I'll buy it. Tell me what lens to buy. I will buy it. Tell me how far to put the fucking camera from the thing and I will do it. I want my videos to look like this. Also very well edited, my friend. So I'm impressed so far. Cody Ko's business strategy that has led to his online success and his ability to make millions of dollars from the internet. It's simple, really. It really is simple. It's buy low and then you sell higher than what you bought for. So buy low, sell high would be the short form. Of that. That's my that's my business strategy, honestly. The generation of entrepreneurs have used the site to launch their business and themselves. Hey yo, it's Cody. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. That's a little keep your dick fat. I heard that. That's a deep cut. She let that slide. Hey. Them seven grains. Hey. Make my dick gain. 25 pounds every month. My shit could fill up a trunk. <laughs> Noel really went in on that. You know, for how bad of a beat that was, because it was my first beat ever, Noel really really went in. I mean, pretty wild. I have been a fan of Cody Ko for years, and while many people enjoy consuming his content, I think that he has- Dude, I was so jacked right here. Fuck, man, I gotta get back in that shape. I just out douche myself again, watching a video about myself where I complimented myself in the video. Come on, dude, get with it! I really wanna find out how Cody is able to conquer so many different mediums and platforms and make millions of dollars while he's doing it. Billions of dollars, by the way. It's the year 2012. Cody Ko is a computer science major at Duke University. You had to use that picture, huh? You had to use that picture, huh, Hunter? You had to use that one, dude. Appreciate it. He decided to create something that would change his life forever. <laughs> the Facebook. <laughs> Isn't that what this is? This is a social network, right? <laughs> yes, that's right. I will. I I am the Winklevoss twins. I created the Facebook, actually. That's a little known fact. But Hunter did his research clearly. You like to humiliate your friends. I know I do. And one way I do that is with I'd cap that. I remember when that interview or when that video segment came out on CNET, I was like blown away because as a tech guy, as a guy that did computer, studied computer science, sorry, and was really into tech growing up and, you know, get every new Apple product and fuck around, try to jailbreak it, all that stuff. I was obsessed with like tech blogs, like TechCrunch and CNET. And so when CNET did a, a whole video segment about my app that I wrote. I freaked out. It was crazy. I was I remember that. You upload a photo and the app generates a random funny caption. It was simple. And you could almost say it was if you say it right now, Hunter. If you say it, we are beefing. Frictionless. First the photo and now the frictionless meme. We're beefing, dude. And I'll do it, you know, frictionless. 
no frictionless. It's funny, I actually remember using this app in high school and I thought it was great. And it ended up being incredibly successful. I'd cap that acquired more than 4 million users. Really? Holy shit, I forgot. And at one point, it was the top free app in Apple's App Store. Remember this? Remember the Logos quiz game? That was so fun. Remember that shit? 100 floors, Line Surfer. I mean, I was standing among giants here, you know? Cody ended up selling the business for a low six-figure amount. This experience proved to Cody that he could be an entrepreneur. So he invented the Facebook. <laughs> The company that acquired it gave me low six figures, but it was half stock in the company, half cash. So it wasn't like I made a hundred thousand bucks cash. I made like a decent chunk of change and it m allowed me to move out to Silicon Valley and get an apartment and shit like that and buy furniture. It's pretty much it. Cody decided to go backpacking in Asia while starting small projects on the side to generate some income. One of these was an app called Weather Candy. They gave you the forecast along with a photo of a dog, girl, or guy. Why didn't that take off, you know? Come on, that's genius. Who doesn't want to look at a picture of a hot dude, hot girl, cute pet, while they're looking at the weather every morning? I mean, it's, why didn't it work? I'll never know. That's how I started being a little back-end little bitch boy because of weather candy. That taught me how to write a server and an API. Another was a greeting card business. For $5, you could send a card to your friend that on the front said, hey, and you'd open it up and it would say something like, have a terrible birthday or some ridiculous joke like that, which, Sounds like something Cody would make. Yeah, it was simpler than that though. The design was way simpler. It was like for $5, you could send a greeting card anywhere in the world, any address, even North Korea, I'm pretty sure. I think they'd said that on the website, it said even North Korea lol. And the card would say, hey, on the front in like American typewriter font, like really small. And then you open it and it would say, fuck you. And that was that, that was the idea. And it did pretty well. However, while on this trip, Cody decided to do something that would change the course of his career. He started posting to a little social media app called Vine. Your timing is off a little bit. I started it before. I don't know why I'm nitpicking you, Hunter. You know, I should just be appreciative that you made this video in the first place, but you didn't do your research well enough, dude. Cody began posting silly videos to Vine. Silly? I'm not a silly boy. This catapulted Cody to be one of the app's most prominent figures. All of this attention allowed Cody to promote his car business to his followers, and it really showed Cody the power of owning an audience on the internet. I guess it did. I think I'm learning just as much from this video as, as everyone else is, honestly. I think that's true. I think it really did. Because we had this product and then we started promoting it through Vine and we were like, oh, a lot of people are using it. Like, we could do other stuff. Vine eventually died down and so Cody transitioned his focus over to YouTube. He uploaded vlogs and talking head style videos that were almost like stand-up bits. And these videos got views, but... <laughs> Dude, how does this video look better than anything I've filmed in the last five years? How did the first camera in I bought somehow make my videos look better than they do now. I mean, it's like, what am I, what am I doing? In 2017, Cody and Noel would start a series that would take over YouTube and change their lives forever. Welcome back to That's Cringe, ladies and gentlemen. In this series, Cody and Noel would react and make fun of cringy content on the internet. This series went completely viral and catapulted Cody and Noel to YouTube stardom. Why do I look so glammed up right here? I got caked on makeup. I look like a doll. All of this success caused Cody and Noel to start a podcast exclusively on Patreon where the audience has to pay to get access. It currently has over 20,000 patrons. You don't have to pay to get access. You just have to pay to get access to the bonus content. We do one episode a week for free on the TMG channel or on the podcast app, Spotify, whatever you want to listen to it on. And then we do another episode every week that's only for Patreon subscribers. And we actually got really lucky by taking a chance on Patreon early. There were a few podcasts that were on Patreon that were doing really well when we started our podcast. So, you know, it was kind of like, well, let's try it. Let's try and start a Patreon and see if it, you know, see if it works. And Patreon has, has since grown substantially, which means like, you know, we've grown with Patreon. And so, you know, because we took a chance on this early now, we're one of the biggest Patreons on the website, which is just an insane kind of stroke of luck that we had. This is top Patreons overall. Out of every Patreon, we're number seven. We're number seven, we're the seventh biggest. That little bet really paid off for us and uh, I appreciate everyone who subscribes and we put a lot of effort into this because, you know, it matters. They started making music and they currently generate over 1,800,000 streams per month on Spotify. Cody started a mug company that sells around $70,000 every two weeks. That was true in January because we were really pushing Valentine's Day. So we did a lot of 
promotion and we, we sold a lot of mugs but uh you know it's slowed down since then it's just you know kind of teetering along but we're working on stuff we're, we're working on we got some fun stuff coming up we got candles maybe we got some other fun products lined up for this little business so it's a fun project for sure what i find incredibly fascinating about cody's strategy for business and for content creation is that he approaches it with an engineer's perspective what i realize is that it, it's not like as separated as seeing myself in an interview context like this is so cringe anytime i pick up a new like creative skill or whatever and mm -hmm. I, I really put work into it i find that it's really similar to programming fuck you man fuck you cody is a pro at picking up on patterns and trends and using them to his advantage whether he's creating a video a song or releasing a new product but what's crazy to me is most content creators with a successful youtube channel and podcast would stop pursuing other ventures but Cody continues to push himself to explore new talents. If you're not growing, you're dying or something like that, you know? No, I'm kidding. Here's the thing, at the risk of sounding like I sounded in that in interview, I think the, the main reason why we've tried to do so much shit is because it's just like fun, it's just, I, I, I can't like stay stagnant. I can't just do the same thing over and over again. I like, I like change and I like trying new things. And so that's basically, you know, that was podcasts and the music and you know now we're building a podcast network and trying to work on some other bigger ideas it's just fun to push yourself and to like learn new things it just keeps life interesting you know Cody code treats youtube as a business but he prioritizes being honest and genuine and buying low and selling high balancing like how much you're trying to focus on money because like people you know people see through that stuff and it's like it feels not sincere when you do stuff. Insincere, you dumbass. Like, oh, that video style worked really well. It made a bunch of money. Let's do that again. It just like, feels wrong, right? Like, is it, so it's an interesting balance of like figuring out like- I think it was about 37 likes that I said there. This boosts his relatability and allows him to create a loyal and engaged audience. But one of the most powerful and effective things that Cody Co does is he prioritizes simplicity. I love really simple ideas that you just get right away like automatic captions on pictures. At that time, it was like, oh my God. It's comedy gold right there. It's tough being this good looking. Do you see now why this app went so viral? Simplicity, baby, and bad comedy. The main reasons Cody is able to explore these different ventures is that he treats YouTube as a catalyst and launch pad for these different projects and businesses. Yeah, but that's not really that uh, innovative, not really. I mean, look at Mr. Beast. There are people that are doing it way better than me. That dude has catapulted his influence into like 57 businesses. He's gonna be a billionaire, of which, by the way, I already am. Whether you're starting a new hobby or building a business, having the mentality that things will take time to develop and that it'll take patience to get good and see results is an amazing outlook. Because of this outlook, his desire to prioritize simplicity and his ability to create a loyal and engaged audience, Cody Co has been able to conquer the internet and make millions. Billions, by the way, billions. It's really kind of bizarre seeing my own career, you know, like laid out like that in front of me. It was kind of weird for me to watch, but it was really cool at the same time. It's kind of the reason why I do the year in review videos that I used to do, because it's good for me to look back on like what I did in order to use what I learned to keep moving forward because I'm always so focused on like the future and what I want to do. So it was cool to see that. I appreciate it. I really do. And I'm sorry to you guys if you think I'm a douche for watching that and for essentially praising myself in the process. You know, I'm not going to pretend like I haven't done well money-wise. Like, I, like I said, with the Patreon thing and with every move we've made, we've been blessed and I've done, I've made more money than I ever thought I could doing this. So, you know, shout out to everyone that makes my videos happen. Kenny, James, Thomas, Zaid, everyone, you guys roll. Buy my merch. <laughs> All right, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching The Real Reason Cody Code Became a Millionaire. Please buy my merch. <laughs> Thanks again to Public. Appreciate you. Bye. Subscribe to Hunter, by the way. Subscribe to Hunter. Fantastic video, Hunter. Subscribe to him. I'm sure he's got some great video essays coming up in the future. He seems like he has a lot of potential. So nice work. Subscribe to him, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.